Yo, bro. I love you, bro. I love you too, fam. I love you, bro. The people who struggle the most or get it the hardest will succeed in the end. I promise you. You will not have the hardest life forever. Everything will come to you. What you deserve will come to you. And if I end up getting shot and killed for what the fuck I'm doing, or if I end up getting my ass beat at some point in time, or, or nigga, if shit get hard on me, it's because I deserve it. That's point blank, period. Everybody will get a death. Uh, everybody will get a death that is deserving. Everybody will get a life that is deserving. Everybody, you will get what the fuck you deserve. Karma. The liner. I don't know what each and every individual's dream is, hey, hey. but if you believe in yourself and you take heed to what you believe in, created, extended from hate for self and not. I gotta wrestle with him. I wanna make sure that my life made at least five million kids happy. Or they found some sort of answers or resolve in my life. Regardless of the negative around my name, regardless of, of the bad things people say to me, I don't give a fuck. I'm Hey, what's good y'all? So little disclaimer, I'm aware that there's already an X documentary out on Hulu and other YouTubers and whatnot, and that Hulu documentary was phenomenal. I don't think anyone can top it, but I'm gonna try to put my own twist on things and highlight moments and songs that I want to showcase, you feel me? And X is in my top five favorite artists of all time, so to say that this ain't gonna be biased, it's gonna, it's gonna be tough, but I'm gonna try to be objective, so let's get it. Nigga. So, X was an interesting dude to say the least. <laughs> oh, Super Saiyan. Oh. Cloud. Chlamydia. She eat pussy and so do I. Auntie Boat, your grandma broke, your brother broke, nigga, you broke. So, they didn't come. And they said they're not coming. <laughs> pussy. This nigga eating tuna fish. I'm eating pussy. Ah, fuck the fuck the fuck. You can do what? You can move the world like this. World like this. Free code out a bit. X's musical career began all the way back in June of 2013, releasing his first song ever on SoundCloud titled New Slash Flock, and ended up on his debut mixtape, XXX Unmastered. He's showing signs of corruption that went from something to nothing. Put his hands on his mother and now he's fucking his cousin. Sheesh, he was only what, like 15 when he made that? crazy but it's kind of hard to find unless you really want to dig through the trenches of youtube all of the songs from that tape actually got deleted from soundcloud but one song that x uploaded in 2014 is now officially his oldest song still up on his soundcloud titled vice city i've seen the press always being part the double less keeping me out of prison and putting me to the test X ended up in juvenile detention for gun possession charges where he ended up meeting Sir Stokely Clavon Goldborn, aka Ski Mask the Slump God. During their time in there, they became good friends and started freestyling a lot. I have, I have a skinny dick. I don't know what you're talking about. I met him in juvenile jail. I was at least 16. I think he was younger than me at the time. He told me his charges. And I was like, this nigga's in here for armed robbery? I'm like, for, for home invasions? I'm like, okay. What really connected us was we would be beatbox, like making beats on the table, on the chairs and shit. And we would just be freestyling. We would just like feed off of each other. We both were the big brother and little brother at the same time to each other. At that point, we were like, we don't really want a job. And if we need a job and the job doesn't want us because we have face tats, then that's not the job we would really want for ourselves or some shit. Like, fuck it, we're, this is what we're doing. X actually joined Ski's group first, which was called Very Rare. And after they came out, they met up again, planning to rob homes together. However, X bought a mic and they got distracted by hip hop, with X later saying that he realized music was a better outlet for his emotions than committing crimes. 
Soon after, in May of 2014, X released what appeared to be his first EP, Ice Hotel, featuring several appearances from Ski. And in the fall of that year, X released another EP called The Fall, which really shows how diverse X can really be, bro. You can't ever say. In December of that year, X released another EP titled Rare, which only had like three songs on it. In February 2015, X released a mixtape called Heartbreak Hotel, which is a bit of a mystery still to this day as to what the official track listing is. Even X himself kept changing it every so often. In April of that year, X would create his own clique, Members Only, where him and Ski would drop the mixtape Members Only Volume 1. Six months later, Members Only Volume 2 would be released with a lot more members this time and a lot more songs on it. 22 to be exact, with my favorites being Broly and Rare Part 2. So clearly, if you haven't noticed by now, X is an extremely talented and versatile artist where you literally do not know what kind of song he's gonna do next, bro. In November of that year, X was actually charged for committing home invasion, robbery, and aggravated battery, according to these super rare court documents. But a month later, X would drop a song that probably changed everything, but it took a while for it to become mainstream. Wait! Wait! Quiet! Wait till the shit drop! Classic. In March of 2016, X released an EP called It Wasn't Enough, which only had three songs on it, with my favorite being I Love My Click Like Kanye West. Shit slaps. Then a month later, he would drop Willy Wonka Was a Child Murderer. I know, funny name. In April of 2016, XM members only will be featured in his first ever legendary interview with No Jumper, which has at least 12 million views at the time of this recording. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's honestly one of the best No Jumper interviews I've ever seen. It's extremely entertaining. If you want to know more about X, I definitely highly recommend you watching it. Okay, so the following incidents I'm about to mention is up to you if you really want to believe it all. There's a lot, but I think it's really important when we talk about his life. Okay, so mid-May in 2016, X and his girl at the time, Geneva, first meet. Then later that month, the first alleged domestic violence took place. According to Geneva, X threatened to penetrate her with a barbecue cleaner or a barbecue fork. On August 9th, X was arrested from that charge I talked about earlier. In September, X agreed to house arrest and was released from jail. Soon after, he allegedly assaulted Geneva again after she confessed that she slept with another dude. And according to her, X put a knife to her throat, strangled her for a bit, and threatened to hit her with a glass bottle. Later on that month, X and her moved to another part of Florida where he is accused of strangling her on two more occasions. In early October, Geneva claimed that she was pregnant with his kid, which by the way, she lied about. And a few days later, a couple of things took place. According to Geneva, Geneva X threatened to kill her and her unborn child before elbowing, punching, and kicking her. When she asked other residents of the pair's apartment to take her to the hospital, X refused to let her leave, and she recalls him saying that she needed to wait until her face was healed. X and his roommates then drive her to another apartment where they leave her in a bedroom and confiscate her phone. She was trapped in there for two days until she managed to escape and contact the police. 
Real quick, I just want to say, say what you want about Geneva, and trust me, she's heard it all. All over the internet, ex-fans just slandering her name, calling her this, calling her that. But after watching that Hulu documentary, for her to get everything off of her chest and tell the world the things that she said, it takes a lot of bravery, man. And when putting yourself in her shoes, I kind of felt for her a bit. And it's crazy to know that her and ex actually spent the whole weekend together when no one knew. And everyone online just thought that they were hating each other, you know? It's just interesting to think about how we don't truly know what's going on behind the scenes. But, yeah. Then, on October 8th, X was arrested and charged with a lot of different things. He pleaded not guilty, but was detained for violating his house arrest agreement. This was the arrest that X is most notoriously known for, where that famous mugshot came from. And Look At Me starts to explode in the mainstream. Fucking name comes up, my nigga. Jose D. Onfroy, better known by his stage name XXX Tentacion, is an American hip hop recording artist from Plantation, Florida. Well, that's a lot of fucking followers. Hey, holy shit. Holy shit. Hey. What the fuck? Hey, bitch, who is your ass? Hey, Checking my dick in my pants. Hey, 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 where do I even start? Look At Me is the song that put me on to X. In early 2017, right away something about X just stood out like crazy. The energy, how raw the music was, and him as a person too, everything was just hella unique. The song was actually originally released on SoundCloud on December 30th, 2015. Now that shit got well over 200 million views on SoundCloud. And X was already doing shows hella early in 2016, performing that song and the crowd is going nuts for it. The song had hella buzz out there in Florida, or if you were really tuned in with X, you knew about that song all 2016. The song didn't really catch any mainstream traction until that mugshot, and shit just took off from there. It peaked at number 34 on the Billboard Hot 100, and it has like almost 2 billion streams on Spotify. This song was even ranked in the top 100 songs that defined the 2010s by Billboard. The song actually heavily samples a song by Mala called Changes. Rojas, the song's co-producer, once said, One day me and X were sitting at the crib going through beats, and he wasn't really rocking with any of them. And then the last one I showed him was that beat. And he was like, Rojas, this is it. In 15 minutes, it was done. X already knew the whole song in his head before he made it. He's creative as fuck. X decided to distort the whole track in one. X even got his plaque for it, and it was a hilarious moment. Can't forget. Oh, forget. <laughs> You see this fucking mugshot on a platinum plaque? Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Viral. Dun, dun, dun. They, want, they don't want to see you with a platinum plaque. They don't want to see a mugshot on a platinum plaque. <laughs> I hope everyone has a positive day today. Unless you're being tested for HIV. Then, then, uh... And I hope you come out negative. Bro, this song is definitely a top 10 festival slash concert song, probably for the rest of eternity. It's an absolute classic and will always be legendary. Demon just got out of can. I gave my bro an advance. More lights, not more life. More lights. More lights. <laughs> yeah. Alright. <laughs> That's how you feel? That's how you feel? Fuck her? Alright, nice. What that shit? Hey. So now, where do you guys stand? Like, what's good now? I, I still think Drake a fuck nigga. As oh. A, as, a, as a, no, I'm keeping a blood roll. I, I still think Drake a fuck nigga. He's not a man. I think he's a, a bitch. That's a bitch move. Especially when I was in jail facing facing life, bro. You get what I'm saying? If Drake would have came to my, my barn here, you know what I'm saying? That would have made my fucking day. If he, if he would have showed that he, he's a hospitable person and that he's really in this shit for the culture, rather than being a fuck nigga, taking my shit, running off with it, and then putting it on his album, 
then he would have got my kudos. He would have got my respect. I would have, I would have let him hop on the remix, take a hundred percent royalty rate. I would have done it because mm. I know I know I can maintain. You know what I'm saying? And I would have appreciated him for being a real nigga. Drake stealing X's flow on KMT actually benefited X because on April 22nd, Look At Me peaked at number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100. The next month, X released his first official mixtape, Revenge, via Empire Distribution. It consisted of eight songs which were previously on SoundCloud, but it still managed to peak at number 44 on the Billboard 200. And if the world ever has an apocalypse, I will kill all of you fuckers. Fear will be plentiful, death will be bountiful, I will spend none of you peasants. Growing up, my musical influences were Nirvana, The Fray, um, obviously the typical Tupac and Biggie, um, and Lil Wayne. But I like I was like I was always into like different music. I think I made I make that, I think I made that clear with like the music I distribute. So yeah, I, I listen to everything, bro, like everything. I even fucked around and listened to Sugarland. Sugarland is a country uh, man. My biggest song out right now is "Look at Me." My second biggest song is uh, "I Don't Want to Do This Anymore." Um, and all that shows the significance of myself as an artist, going from like typical rap, in the way rap to like an old school R&B and switching my genres. Why do I feel like Double XL chose me for the freshman this year? Because if y'all didn't, y'all didn't respect the culture this year. And, you, and then it's obviously about industry. And I think as an artist or as a person, I feel like I've molded a lot of people the most as far as my, my inside views. And I feel as if, obviously, I'm, I'm one of the greatest of this generation, the upcoming generation, as far as artistry. So if you didn't pick me, Double XL would have been stupid. And I say that humbly. X appeared on the Double XL 2017 freshman class and filled the 10th spot, which is the only spot on the list that is fan selected. According to Double XL, his fans blew up their voting page, pushing him to the top slot by thousands of votes. Later in June of that year, X would release his Members Only Volume 3 tape, which has some X and Ski classics, bruh. <laughs> Seventeen, Man, when this album dropped, I'm not even gonna lie to you, I didn't really like it that much. I wasn't the biggest X fan at the time, so when I was introduced to this project, I didn't really understand it. I guess I was expecting more of that look at me style, aggressive, raunchy, hard 808 type beats, but it was the complete opposite. It took me many months to truly appreciate this project for what it is. Nowadays, I think it's a classic. It actually debuted at number two on the Billboard 200. I know And even Kendrick gave him a nice cosign with this tweet. Listen to this album if you feel anything. Raw thoughts. I remember that day like it was yesterday when X posted that cryptic video on his Instagram and it had everyone scared or at least confused as to what the hell just happened. Turns out it was just promo for his music video Look At Me, which featured a video for another song called Riot, which is actually one of X's most lyrical songs in my opinion. On, the swords, ski mask, on October 19th, X signs a deal worth $6 million, but a week later X claimed that he terminated his deal and says, if you can match my alleged previous contract and add free international travel travel and free international stay, I would be happy to be in business with you. I am currently a free agent. Well, I always was. But soon after, someone from X's camp denied those claims, saying that X is still signed. Man, his revenge tour? If you're watching this and you actually got to see X at a show, you are one blessed individual fam, cause I wish. He actually was supposed to have a show in New York, but I don't know exactly what happened, but it never happened. The shows looked insane. So many crazy moments happened at these shows. He was hanging off balconies, he was getting tossed into the crowd. Bruh, he even passed out and was still turning up on the floor. One dude even knocked him out on stage, bro, that shit was crazy. I remember X making these videos afterwards. 
If you think we finna cancel our fucking sense and the show for a nigga sucker punching me, the fuck you got going on? <laughs> we lit tonight, bitch. Stop hanging. Listen, I'm still in Cali. I want all the smoke. Come to my show. I mean, your motherfucking steak. I want all the pressure. Come knock me the fuck out. Again, let's have a repeat. All right? For anybody asking me how I feel, though, I feel straight. In the end of the day, this is the life I live. Nigga finally caught me lacking. And it was about time. Bitch, I, I was, what, 5 and 0? Oh? <laughs> Shit. About fucking time a nigga knocked me the fuck out. Anybody talking about it was that pussy boy artist. Just so you know, it was some gang niggas from San Diego, some affiliates that snuck in through the side, paid security off so they could come in, snuff me out, and then thought they was going to jump me, but we was too deep. So. Announcement. If you want me to make music, tell Ski Mask to be my friend again. Tell Ski Mask to be my friend again, and I will make music. Tell him to be my friend again. So X and Ski had a bit of a falling out at this point. Basically, Ski moved to New York and wanted to distance himself from X because he felt as if no one would really look at him as an individual artist or just as, you know, X's sidekick or the dude who's always with X, which honestly, I can understand that. Eventually, most people want to branch out and be successful in their own right, but I just think he went with it the wrong way. Hey, listen. Ain't nobody fucking write my lyrics for me, bro. Nobody write my fucking lyrics. Nobody, nobody forces anybody to like the lyrics that I write. So nobody made me. I made my fucking self. You did that. So what happened with me and, and Ski, to explain it in an appropriate way, and in a way that I can respect, I guess a, a lack of appreciation on his end, not because of me, I guess just from a business perspective, but he put a business perspective before a personal relationship. And I've been with uh, with him as a friend and as a brother for a very long time. So it's just on some like other shit, to be honest. It's not even on some like it's not even on anything I've I've done wrong. I can't even you can't even say I've done anything to him. And I wouldn't go I wouldn't go on the internet and express express that if I didn't care about the relationship. But you already know how it goes. People use you to get where they want to go and then part ways. And I've been used a lot. If you haven't noticed. I'll always love that alien looking nigga name at same sex. But I had to distance myself because it's like nobody would see me as an individual rapper if I don't. On top of that, that nigga crazy as hell. <laughs> On December 11th, X released a mixtape called A Ghetto Christmas Carol, which is one of my favorite X tapes. Don't crush, don't crush, you moving too fast now. Yes, I'm dripping like I'm freezing, huh? Bruh, so fire. But more bad news just kept coming X's way. On December 15th, X is jailed ahead of his abuse trial with seven new charges added, including different degrees of witness tampering and witness harassment. But five days later, TMZ reported that X was released from jail and will serve house arrest for two months ahead of his trial. On March 16th, X released his second studio album, Question Mark, via his own label, Bad Vibes Forever. Traveling through the infinity, uh, you know that nigga pretend to be, uh, all that bullshit do not get to me, uh. Going down, it's going down. It actually debuted at number one on the Billboard album charts, selling 131 copies first week, with X being the first SoundCloud artist to have a number one album. A week later, the single Sad reaches number seven on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming X's first top 10 song. Two months later, Spotify actually removed X's music, with Spotify reps issuing a statement basically penalizing any artist accused of abuse. But a month later, on June 1st, they scrapped their hate content policy, following complaints from industry insiders and unfortunately we all know what happened next and i don't want to go into detail about that but i do want to show you guys a clip of when i went to his grave site last year i'm here y'all i'm here yo my heart is pounding for some reason boy i think that's it right there You know, it's kind of crazy looking back at this video as I talk over it. Just watching this again, it's just very surreal, you know? And I remember being there just... Honestly, I was expecting there to be, like, security or... 
I don't know, some people there, you know, it, but it was, it was just me there. It was just me and X. It was a very, very surreal moment. It, it was a crazy experience, bro. Like, you know, just watching this video, as you can see, like I'm picking up rocks and it was just a nice day. And I, I don't know, man, it was, it was definitely an interesting experience, bro. Like, I don't, I'm not good with like funerals. I'm not good with cemeteries and stuff like that. It's just very like, it's a crazy aura when you're around this and I don't know man it, it, it was definitely crazy I drove like 45 minutes from where my brother lives and just just driving there I can't believe I'm driving to X's gravesite you know what I mean like I just wish those assholes didn't do what they did you know what I mean like you see this is dope they had like this glass thing of X that was super cool and just seeing the amount of love bro that you know people are showing him it, it was crazy I did not expect all these rocks to have you know sayings on them oh, oh wait i'm lying there was this family that came actually but like the parents had no idea who x was still <laughs> like oh wow seems like uh people really cared about this guy and the two girls they just you could tell they kind of like only knew look at me or sad like by the way they were talking but it doesn't really matter but uh yeah i ended up like taking off my shirt actually because i didn't have a sharpie or anything or anything to just leave there my shirt's probably not there anymore but i don't know i just felt like just giving something so i drove back i drove back with no shirt on and i was wondering too like as i was making this video i don't i was like should i make this ending sad like i don't i don't know i didn't know how to make this you know documentary but and when they released a music video for sad bro that was one of the most eeriest things i've ever seen man the fact that he was looking over himself in a casket like bro it was just wild to see it's as if he knew he was gonna die for real he did speak about death a lot though bro and i'm the type of person where i believe the energy you put out is the same energy you're gonna get right back and then the moonlight video bro that was insane the concept of that video was like he was already dead and he's watching all his homies turn up without him seeing his ex like bro it was crazy also i want to mention when juice world made the song legends after x passed bro i used to cry to that shit all the time People actually thought, or some people still think, that Drake has something to do with his death. Now, I'm not gonna lie, fam, with the evidence I'm gonna show you, it's a little creepy and a bit too coincidental, but hear me out. X had posted this once on his story, right? So that's one thing. And if you listen to the lyrics and I'm upset, it's a bit wild, considering the way X passed away. SMS, triple X. That's the only time I ever shoot below the neck. And on the song Mob Ties, he also says this. Louis bags in exchange for body bags, yeah. It's a little spooky, bro. And even in the sicko mode music video, you see someone that looks exactly like X getting hit by a meteor or some shit. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? And of course, you know, Skins released December of 2018, which I actually like. But despite a lot of mixed reviews, it was a commercial success, debuting at number one on the Billboard 200. To be honest, we all knew that was gonna happen, with everyone being so curious to hear it. And you know, I appreciate them for doing what they could by dropping what X probably would have wanted, because he did say this on his story. So Members Only Volume 4 was released in early 2019. This had the lead single Sauce on it by X, which was originally over Migos' Ice Tray instrumental. Then they changed it to another beat, which I like both to be honest. And it was okay, it just didn't feel the same with X not having control on it, you know? And don't get me started how much they've, and when I say they, whoever is agreeing to put out all his unreleased music, whether it's his mom, the family, the label, whoever, they've definitely milked his legacy, fam. I pretty much could tell when they released Bad Vibes Forever, his second posthumous album, which was extremely divisive by his fans and critics. Don't get me wrong though, there's actually some songs on here that feel finished, and it has two of one of my favorite extracts, Eat It Up and Triumph. Oh my dear. Oh, 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 my wrist. Oh, oh. oh sad and triumph. But there were a lot of features on here that just felt forced. <clears throat> Rick Ross. <clears throat> the music video for Hot Gyal was unnecessary and seemed like an attempt at a single and it did not flow well with the fans at all. As you can see here from the comments. And they did do a release party for the album, which I thought was pretty cool. A lot of his peers performed like Rob Banks, Kid Trunks, Young Bands, even Playboy Cardi was there. And there was some controversy about the little X museum that his mom created for the fans and whatnot. She had the actual vehicle that X died in on display. 
I don't know, man. I'm a little iffy on that. That's eerie as fuck, one. And it just seems, I don't know, distasteful in my opinion. But hey, to each his own, I guess. It's crazy too because just when I thought there were no more X music to put out, Kanye's Donda 2 live stream started off with some beautiful X vocals. And that shit had me tearing for real. And another song on there too called Selfish. Selfish, I just wish you all my own. And when they released a documentary on Hulu, it came with a soundtrack for it too, with a bunch of his old SoundCloud songs on it, now officially released on DSPs. Did his fans like that? I don't know, it's 50-50. But I do think it's cool for the casual fan to hear these songs for the first time. As a solo act, who is more of a diverse artist than X that was a mainstream artist? I would argue in any genre. Just off the top of my head real quick, I'm gonna compare a couple tracks back to back and you can be the judge on how diverse this man really is. Suicide Pit and Ayala Outro. Hate Will Never Win and The Boy With The Black Eyes. Another example, Rip Roach and Curse. A lot of artists today wish they can be like X. The boy was just way too talented. Now I challenge you guys to comment down below and let me know. I'm, I, I really want to hear you guys answers because I really don't know any other artist that's more diverse than that boy X, bro. Yo, my boy has eggs, bro.